Your smartphone knows a lot about you, and in some cases, people think too much. Certain features and settings are enabled on Android by default, and we think you might want to disable some of these right now. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. A quick little process you'll need to do before we get into the meat of this video is to enable developer options before diving into this list, as you might be left scratching your head trying to find out each of the settings and features. Just head to settings, about phone, build number, now tap it seven times and enter your pin or passcode, and you'll have access to a wonderful world of extra phone functionality. We'll also be using a number of devices to demonstrate that it's possible to adjust these settings on just about every Android phone out there, but without any further ado, let's get into it. So if out there you have an older phone or a modest phone with a low amount of RAM available, then you can actually limit or disable the standard background process limits. This might not make an immediate difference to your day-to-day -day experience, on day one that is, but further down the line, limiting just how many concurrent background apps are held in stasis at any point in time could prove useful. To enable this, just head to settings, developer options, and background process limit. From here, you can set the process limit between zero and four, although if you leave this unable, this will be at the default. This means you can play around to find the right setting for you and your device. Another way to potentially reduce battery usage on your phone is to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning on your Android phone. In simple terms, these features mean that your phone is able to scan for Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices, even when both settings are disabled for better location accuracy or even GPS pinpointing. Both settings are found in the same place in Android on Pixel, so it's hard not to disable Bluetooth and Wi-Fi scanning at the very same time. To do so, head to Settings, Location, Wi-Fi scanning and Settings, location, Bluetooth scanning, and toggle these options to off. Most Android phones out there will automatically add brand new apps or reinstalled apps to your home screen. Now, that's great if you like having access to everything across multiple home screen pages. We still think though that the app drawer does a better job of keeping things neat for applications that you might not need or want access to all that often, but you do want to keep on your phone. Depending on your device launcher though, you can enable or disable this function by long pressing any blank space on your home screen or some of those side pages and tapping home settings or even settings. From here, check or uncheck the add app icons to your home screen toggle to suit your personal preferences if you want that on or if you want that disabled. Sometimes apps on your Android phone will have access to mobile data and Wi-Fi connections to do things like update your feeds in the background and save time on loading until you reopen them. However, with potentially hundreds of apps on your phone able to do this, you can rack up a ton of data usage if you're on a limited plan. This can pause or limit notifications on your phone, but you have the ability to adjust this on an app by app basis. So that means only apps that you select will be affected. There are a few ways to enable or disable background data usage for apps installed on your phone. The easiest and most obvious though is to head to the app in question by opening settings, apps. Now select the app that you want to adjust data settings for, then hit mobile data and Wi-Fi and background data. Another way to reach this menu and to see up-to-date information on just how much data is being used on Pixel phone specifically is to head to settings, network and internet, internet and non-operated data usage, then select an app and hit that background data section. In a similar manner to apps gaining background data access, you might want to limit just how your mobile data is utilized by your device. On most Android phones, mobile data is technically always available, even when you're connected to a fast, stable Wi-Fi network. Sure, this does mean that quickly switching between Wi-Fi and mobile data is seamless, but it does mean potentially battery life squeezes. We'd suggest that you disable this functionality right out of the gate because there's no real penalty when leaving a Wi-Fi network and reconnecting to data channels. To disable this, you need to head to settings, system, developer options, mobile data is always active, and now toggle this off. When you're out and about, you also might get notifications on your phone to alert you that an open or public Wi-Fi network is available. In most cases, this might get a bit annoying if you're in a congested area or if you have no intention of connecting to public or unsecured networks. While it can be useful, you have the option to disable this functionality at any time. If you have a low data allowance, we would suggest keeping it active, but for everyone else, you can disable this by heading to settings, network and internet or Wi-Fi, network preferences, notify for public networks and enable or disable this as you see fit. 
This might be hidden under an advanced section on some Android devices out there though. In a bit to help improve the Android OS, you might not realize that certain diagnostics and usage information is shared with Google when you encounter issues, app crashes, or even slowdowns. It is worth noting though that this information is completely anonymous and normally only relates to things such as battery level, extensive app usage, and the quality of your network and Bluetooth connections. Because of that though, it's fair for you to want to disable these added settings on your Android as there are plenty of other people to provide that information across the globe. To disable usage and diagnostic information though, open settings, Google, tap the upper right three dot menu in usage and diagnostics and then tap this to off. Whether or not you're signed into your Google phone with your Google account, you'll get search or banner ads across some 2 million plus websites that do use Google's ad platforms. These ads get tailored to your interests and even your commonly used search terms in an attempt to make those ads more relevant to you. Understandably though, you might not want such ads appearing and Google does make it fairly simple to disable and adjust these and these ad settings that is on your Android phone. To do so, just adjust or open settings, Google ads, tap your Google account, now data and privacy, add settings and add personalization. This panel will show you all of the information that Google has gleaned from the data that you've provided to create an ad profile based upon your account. If you want less personalized ads on your account, just toggle this setting to off. This option should be disabled by default on most phones, but we recommend checking it to be 100% certain as it can mean that NFC payments are possible for anyone using your phone. Basically, when using Google Pay or another wireless payment method on your phone, the func this function blocks the ability to do so unless you first unlock your phone using PIN, password, or biometric info. In most cases, this being disabled is absolutely fine. However, if you do lose your phone, someone could start making multiple payments before you're able to block a card or your bank account. Conversely, you actually may want to quickly access your payment methods without having to put your pin in when using public transfer, public transport, or even making super quick payments throughout the day. You can though choose whichever setting you do prefer, but we'd certainly suggest leaving as is, as it is quite convenient to not have to unlock your phone every time. To check though, head to settings, connection preferences, NFC, and toggle or uh, disable require device unlock for NFC. While your lock screen blocks people from getting access to your device with biometric data, pin or passcode, it isn't completely foolproof because of how notifications are displayed by default on Android phones. Android though does allow you to hide notifications in a similar way to how iOS handles them. Rather than display who a message or notification is from, you'll just see that a notification is waiting from a specific app. You can even disable notifications at, from appearing at all on your lock screen if you want that little bit of extra peace of mind though. Enabling is as easy as heading to settings, notifications, and then hitting the sensitive notifications section. On Samsung phones though, hit settings, lock screen, notifications, and then hide content. So that's a few things that we think you should definitely disable right away when you get your brand new Android phone or if you use an existing phone for that matter. But is there something that you literally cannot live without or you think that you have to disable right away? Let us know down in the comment sections below. I always interested to hear your thoughts, especially with so many settings that you can change on your phone. After all though, hopefully you enjoyed this. This is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.